It being 4 p.m., community recognition statements are interrupted for the consideration of the electronic petition by 20,000 or more persons listed on the business paper, which requests that the Legislative Assembly supports trail and adventure motorcycling in New South Wales lodged by the member for Coogee. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Coogee. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to speak to this petition that's been put forward, and I'd like to take note that over 20,000 people have signed this petition, mm -hmm. and it takes a huge amount of effort to get 20,000 people to sign this, and it actually happened well, well before even the due date that was there. And I want to say that is a testament to your advocacy and it is a clear demonstration that you are a significant stakeholder and recreation group that should and does have a voice at the table and should at least be heard. Um, Mr Speaker, 20,000 signatures, 20,000 dirt bike riders are obviously a significant stakeholder group and yet the Minister has not met with them to discuss their very real safety concerns that they have about riding on fire tracks and their desire to have a considered and strategic conversation about the future of their recreation. Mr Speaker, there are misconceptions about who trail bike riders are and the public stereotype of young hoons tearing around town is so far from the truth. Riders come from many different ethical backgrounds, including European, Mediterranean, North and South American, African, Asian and Indigenous First Nations Australians. They're employed as lawyers, paramedics, firefighters, restaurant owners, tradespeople, traffic controllers, military personnel, transport workers, teachers, and many, many more. They're a diverse group of people who love what they do, and they want to have a considered conversation about the future of their recreation that they love. Mr Speaker, ultimately this debate is about ensuring that key stakeholders in a recreation and sporting group can meet with ministers to raise concerns that they have. The fact that my constituents, members of a substantial recreation community group, were told that they could not meet with the minister to discuss their concerns is deeply frustrating. It is absolutely shameful, and so I'm supportive of having this discussion here in this parliament, the people's parliament, where people can raise their concerns and awareness to raise awareness about this issue. Mr Speaker, trail bike riders want to have an open dialogue with the Minister and figure out a mutually amicable way to have trail and adventure riders made legal, safe and accessible to the public. They are disheartened by unwillingness of this government to meet with them and discuss their concerns and to find a solution. Mr Speaker, I agree with concerns of environmental groups, so I'm supportive of finding appropriate land for dirt bike riders and there must be more effective use of underutilised land that can address the safety concerns raised by dirt bike riders without negatively impacting our native ecology. The fact that the minister has refused to have this conversation or investigate this matter is unfair to both parties. The Motorcycle Council of New South Wales wants this policy to be considered considerate of land and ecology and is very insistent that land choice be suitable. This is language that is reflected in this petition. Ultimately, this petition is one about safety. It's about registering vehicles, and it's about recognising the over 20,000 people who want to have a respectful conversation and to find a solution to save a sport and the recreation that they love. Mm -hmm. To date, the Minister is refusing to meet with riders to find this solution. Mr Speaker, one of the unintended consequences of the government's approach to date is that it's fostering and facilitating illegal behaviour. Mr Speaker, there is no excuse for illegal behaviour at all, and trail bike riders that I've met with wanted to meet with the Minister to address this issue and to have a conversation about solutions to this problem. Those doing the wrong thing will absolutely be punished for doing so, but having a considered and conversation about solutions and eliminating this behaviour in the first place is incredibly significant. Mr Speaker, riders want to work with the government to eliminate illegal behaviour and activity, but this can only happen if the Minister is willing to meet with them. 
Mr Speaker, trail bike riders tell me that they do not feel safe on shared tracks with four-wheel drives. Treating trail bike riders the same way as four-wheel drive riders is discriminatory to the trail bike riders and completely ignores their safety concerns. Mr Speaker, a dialogue needs to occur to ensure everyone feels safe. This debate here today is because a significant stakeholder and group in our community have been ignored and left in the dark. Speaker, the government must meet with riders and work with them to find a solution. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Mulgoa. Thank you, Mr Temporary Speaker. And uh, I would like to thank the uh, member for Coogee for bringing this petition to the House and uh, for noting the concerns and giving air to the concerns for the riders and those representing the Motorcycle Council of New South Wales. Um, I also would like to put on the, um, on the record that this opportunity for the people of New South Wales to engage in debates on, on topics that they're passionate about and that they are interested in was actually an opportunity that was brought to fruition into this parliament of New South Wales by the former Liberal Premier, the Honourable Barry O'Farrell. And I would like to acknowledge his work um, in providing this avenue for the people of New South Wales to actually raise their specific issues that are personal and that, are, that they themselves are passionate about. Uh, so I thank the, the member for bringing this petition to the House. Uh, this government, the New South Wales Liberals and Nationals, is making significant investments in our national parks to tackle the challenges that are facing the long-term survival of our native plants and animals, to expand Aboriginal land management and stewardship, and to deliver new and improved experiences for park visitors and tourists. The level of investment in fire management, feral animal control and threatened species protection is currently at record levels across the New South Wales National Parks Estate. National Parks and Wildlife Estate is the first national park agency in Australia with, to set a zero extinctions, extinctions target and one of the first in the world. Around 85% of all threatened species in New South Wales are represented on the National Park Estate despite national parks occupying just over 9% of the state. This highlights the critical role of national parks in effective conservation of threatened species. Aboriginal land management and stewardship is at the heart of our efforts to conserve our precious environment and care for country. This government has commenced the development of a new model for Aboriginal joint management of national parks. And this new model will be built on efforts to ensure land management techniques remain best practice while also providing for continued public access and visitation. The New South Wales Government is also investing $450 million in more than 200 visitor infrastructure projects across the state by 2024. When developing these new visitor experiences and facilities, the focus is on sustainability and on balancing the needs of people and conserving the environment. Enabling people to access parks by vehicles is an important part of the visitor experience. Arrangements for vehicle use in national parks are set out in park plans of management and the MPWS vehicle access policy. Under the policy, vehicle access, including four-wheel driving and registered trail bike use, can be appropriate in certain places in certain parks where it is compatible with the conservation and visitor management objectives of the park. There are currently over 10,000 kilometres of public roads and trails in national parks accessible for recreational motorcycle riding. Motorcycles that are registered and riders that are licensed may access this large network. Earlier this year, the government added over 30,000 hectares of state forest to establish the Gardens of Stone State Conservation Area, together with additions of land to the Gardens of Stone and Wollamai National Parks. MPWS is also responsible for the management of several flora reserves. I'm advised that under existing Forestry Corporation of New South Wales policies, off-road, off-trail or single-track vehicle use are not permitted. Despite this, in many current and former state forest lands, I understand high levels of unauthorised off-road vehicle access have occurred. I am also advised that significant environmental degradation is apparent in many of these areas, including soil erosion, watercourse sedimentation and damage to management trails and vegetation. MPWS is managing these current and former state forest lands consistent with existing policy and rules. 
That involves managing the environmental risks of unauthorised vehicle access in these areas, including via compliance and enforcement campaigns. Community consultation is key to informing management arrangements for these areas. MPWS is engaging with the community to prepare new management plans for these areas that will continue, that will confirm future vehicle access arrangements. The New South Wales Government welcomes community views on the management of national parks. MPWS will continue to engage with key stakeholders and recreational users, including four-wheel drive and trail bike user group representatives. With respect to vehicle access, current legislative and policy settings are considered appropriate to achieve outcomes that balance the protection of conservation values with a variety of community recreational needs. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Barwon. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr Speaker. I've been looking forward to this. In the interest of full disclosure, I love motorbikes. I collect them, I love riding them, I love owning them, I love looking at them and even just listening to the sound they make. I started at four and I have not looked back. While that might mean I have a bit of a vested interest in arguing in favour of this petition, it also means I completely understand the need for a strategic plan to develop trail and adventure motorcycle riding in New South Wales. I understand the excitement of jumping on a bike, starting it up, the vibration, dare I say the power. I didn't say between the legs, but letting it take you where you want to go. But that's just the problem. There are relatively few places you can go to legally ride a non-registered trail bike in Australia, which means there are a small number of people illegally riding their bikes in national parks or on private land or other public land and basically anywhere they can, and that causes all sorts of social disruption. I look at my towns like Walgett and Burke, Levy Bank towns, where you've constantly got problems with young people riding around the Levy Bank because they've got nowhere else to go. The usual thing a government might do to counter this is uh, work on prevention, sometimes sending out a special squad of trail bike police to root out offenders and issue fines or impound bikes, which happens. But since those who lo love riding bikes are never going to lose the passion, it makes much more sense to find legal and safe ways for off-road motorbike riders to enjoy the recreation they love. A system of registering bikes uh, and riders and using registration fees to create and improve designated riding areas would work much better than trying to stop it happening, similar to what we do in Victoria. The Australian fascination for anything with a motor in it goes back a long way. The love of motorbikes can be traced largely to the 1898 Tour of Australia by the French motorcyclists, Mademoiselle Anthel Anthelmina Sir Paulette, I think I got that right, who rode a motorised tricycle. She was a woman ahead of her time. Inspired by her machine, a year later, the Lewis Cycle Works, a company of South Australia, produced its own motor triplet cycle inspired by the French machine. Pretty soon there were two-wheeled varieties, many of them imported from overseas, and some of, them, uh, the, some of the first people to take them riding were farmers. Men on the land saw motorbikes as a versatile alternative to riding a horse, one that would allow them to go faster. And you don't have to feed it, you've got to put fuel in, that's handy. It led to the first motorbike speedway event in Australia at Maitland Showground in 1923. Many of the competitors were farmers. Within a couple of decades, motorbikes became common, and in 1928, the Auto Cycle Council of Australia, now known as Motorcycling Australia, was established. Since then, the number of motorcycles purchased each year has gone up and up. Many driven on our roads, but statistics show that a significant portion of them, perhaps a quarter, were never registered for the road, but often used as off-roaders. It shows the persistence and growth uh, of trail bike riding as a recreational activity. And we are talking here about single track and adventure riding. We're not talking about competitive racing. It's almost like sightseeing from the back of a motorbike. I'm not talking about going at 10 tenths, even though, you know, I'm a two-stroke man. I think Brian knows I'm a two-stroke man, so I do like going a little bit fast sometimes on the dirt. Uh, that's not what this is about. According to data gathered by the, Austra the, by the Federal Chamber of Automotive Industries, 123,530 motorcycles and off-highway off vehicles were sold throughout 2021. Of these, off-road motorbikes made up around 43% and road-registered uh, motorcycles made up about 30%. This is quoted in the January edition of the uh, Motorbike Rider magazine. It means there are thousands of trail bikes, dirt bikes, off-road motorcycles that are looking for a legal place to ride. There is no doubt some of those enthusiasts, for want of a, any better place uh, to indulge their favourite pastime, are riding secretly in places they shouldn't. But I'm sure most, uh, if they had a viable alternative, would go to it to minimise the impact. The government should be looking at opening suitable public land for use rather than locking it away and preventing people from enjoying it or having to spend money on seeking out trespassers and punishing them for trying to enjoy their, their passion. One possibility could be to develop uh, trail, tr uh, bike riding trails that can double as emergency service access tracks in times of crisis. 
This would have the desired effect of getting bike riders out of riding in towns and into safer defined areas set aside for their machines, providing safe areas for the activity to take place. It would also be a boon for tourism in areas that host the designated trail bike riding tracks. And we've seen how people will travel for that sort of activity, Mr Speaker. This would also allow for control over where riders are riding, who is riding the bikes, and make sure that people are not going beyond their level of skill or experience, putting themselves in dangerous situations, endangering others, or destroying critical native vegetation. It's my experience that most bike riders want to do the right thing. <clears throat> They're actually really good people. Doing the wrong thing can be dangerous, destructive, uh, and does nothing for the reputation of, rec of the recreational activity. The government makes it easier for riders to stay within the law and enjoy their sport. I believe more, more and more people will continue to get involved. And really, Mr Speaker, what is being asked for here? We're not asking for every piece of public land to be opened up for people to go and ride dirt bikes. What we're saying is let's fund a strategic plan to look at where it can be done safely, where it's not going to have any negative environmental impacts. This is not a ridiculous ask, Mr Speaker. This is very sensible. Thank you. The question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Wollongong. Thank you, uh, thank you, Speaker. And uh, I'd like to thank the, uh, the member for Coogee uh, for bringing this petition to the House. I'd also like to thank those members of the, uh, uh, of the Motorcycle Council of New South Wales and the members who have joined us in the gallery, motorcycle enthusiasts. It's good to see you here uh, involved and engaged in listening to this debate. And uh, as, as both the member for Coogee and the member for Barwon have said, this is about finding a legal and safe solution. Now, the fact that more than 20,000 people in the space of a couple of weeks have signed a petition uh, saying that we just want to be spoken to like adults about this thing says that there's a problem, says that we need to sit down, says that we need to uh, uh, deal with this in a sensible and rational solution. Now, I grew up in Mount Kembla, and some of the, uh, the, the people in the gallery might be aware of the, uh, the Mount Kembla motorbike track that's, the, that's there. It's been there for 60-odd years been there for a long time. In fact, my uncle used to race sidecars. He used to be on the sidecar. Crazy. I can't imagine doing it myself, but uh, he used to be there. And uh, for 60 years, it's been operating. It uses former uh, cedar cutting trails uh, that is, uh, that is part, a part of their, their trail, their, their uh, enduro uh, trials. Uh, and they came cow, tra uh, cow tracks uh, when, when the cedar cutting ended in Mount Kembla and, and, uh, and dairy cows moved in. Uh, they now become uh, uh, enduro tracks. They're now used by the RFS, the Mount Kembla RFS, to go in and deal with, uh, uh, with fallen trees and access to trails. But because of a line that got changed on a map a little while ago, uh, it's also now part of National Park. And this has become a source of conflict because uh, despite 40 years of not really enforcing uh, any, any restrictions on there. Now that there's a, a, a work being done on mountain, uh, mountain bike trails uh, in the back of Mount Kembla, uh, that, uh, that there's now a desire to, uh, to, um, uh, to enforce that restriction and enforce that limitation. But it's a bit short-sighted, not only because there's been 40 years of exist, existing use since there was a change in the lines on the map, not only because there's been 60 years of use of that, not only because Mount Kembla has produced, or the, the track up there has produced some of our best enduro riders in the country and best enduro riders in the world, but these guys have looked after that track for a very long time. Uh, they've invested in bridges and safe riding and the like, and uh, what happens when that's removed is that motorbike enthusiasts and trail riding and adventure riding enthusiasts and kids who get up there and have somewhere safe and legal to ride suddenly don't. They don't have anywhere safe and legal to ride. So what do they do? They ride in unsafe and illegal areas. They ride through the streets of Yedendera and the streets of Berkeley, and that has resulted in kids hitting parked cars uh, and hitting pedestrians, and it's resulted in the deaths of teenagers. But that's the consequence of this. That's the consequence of this if we don't start to have an adult conversation about it. Now, I completely agree, completely agree, as the member for Coogee said earlier in her contribution, that, this, that there are concerns of environmental groups. We don't want national parks damaged and destroyed. What we want, and what the petitioners want in this circumstance, is a sensible way of finding appropriate land on which we can do this safely, legally, sensibly and with the understanding of everyone else who might be users of that, uh, of that part of land. It's looking at ways we can address the safety issues by using underutilised land that not only provides an outlet for a genuine, legitimate and, uh, and great fun 
recreational activity, uh, but also provides for a means of doing it sensibly and safely. And as, as, uh, as has been pointed out in this debate earlier, uh, the Motorbike Council of New South Wales also want a policy where they can look after the land, look after the ecology, look after the safety of riders, and, uh, and, be, uh, and, and make sure there's a suitable use of land. And uh, this motion ultimately, ultimately is about safety. It's not seeking terribly much. Two principal points that the Minister for the Environment provide funding for the development of a strategic plan for trail and adventure motorcycle riding and amend the National Parks and Wildlife Policy so single track trail riding is permitted in suitable areas. Now there's a couple of key elements in that. Development of a strategic plan, amending a policy and finding suitable areas. And the second point of this petition uh, being that the Minister for Transport introduced recreational registration similar to the current Victorian scheme that enables better compliance with legal requirements by trail bike communities. Now, it's a little known fact. I mean, a lot of people discuss what happened during COVID, but it's a little known fact that bikes were among the biggest selling things that were bought during that time. We've got to find a sensible solution and we've, we've got to do it in an adult manner. Thank you, House. The the question is that the House take note of the petition. I call the member for Heathcote. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate and thank the uh, member for Coogee for bringing this petition forward. And also, I thank the petitioners for the outstanding uh, work you have to, to collect the amount of uh, signatures for that petition. I had an uh, extensive visit um, by, by a uh, member of the, the Motorbike Council, and it, it, was, a, it was very enlightening. Um, I'm not a bike rider, but, but I can imagine uh, a pastime like we're discussing today. There's no better place to come than the, the seat of Heathcote. We've got that many extensive state forests, um, fire trails. Um, we've got um, not necessarily border board land, but we do have, we have land that a horse riding is on, and it's extensive through through state forest and, uh, and the national parks. Those areas should be for recreation. That's what, that's what they're, they're set, set aside for. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. The discussion I did have though is the transitioning and the opportunities we do have into the future for allowing uh, motorbike riding within these areas and setting up regional, regional centres where people will be coming and trying different, different types of, uh, of tracks and but under a safe guise, so it's well, well maintained and, and you know, dangers of overhanging branches and everything are, are taken care of. But I, we also discussed the transitioning to electric motorbikes. I know Member Fukuji has got an interest in uh, electric um, motorbikes. Into the future, there's opportunities there for setting up um, you know, proper, proper parks enabling not only petrol driven but um, electric vehicle, um, electric motorbikes to, to enjoy the, uh, the tracks. I've got an um, uh, off-road push bike um, organisation in my electorate who started from scratch in Helensburg. They took over again, like the member for Wollongong, it was old forestry um, tracks and, and, and entrances. They've cleaned that up completely. The National Parks have work, been working with them. They've put, they've put gutters, they've made sure that the, um, there's no erosion issues, they've, they've completely maintained the, the track so that there, there is a safe and sustainable way that they can follow their sport. And this is what I think we should be looking at, exactly what we should be looking at for this issue and allowing in certain areas within probably you know, every, every couple of seats, having an area where, where uh, motorbike riders can go and enjoy the outdoors with their families in a safe and managed way. Just on the, on the off-road push bike people, it actually is a, uh, like a um, uh, honey, a bee, bees to honey. Now that there's, mo there's push bike mechanics that come and, and set up on the weekends because there's opportunities for them to sell, sell equipment, same thing can be done at some of these regional areas that we're discussing as a setup and a safe area. So if you have a blowout, there's tyres there available for you to replace it. If you have a chain broken, there's, there's obviously uh, mechanics there to help you. And also have a, have a flat parking area, have it properly, properly um, um, maintained so that you're not just in the bush, you know, in a, in a muddy, muddy area, you've actually got a bit of tarmac to, to, to bring your vehicle in in a safe and manageable way. So 
I had I had some notes here about um, what what uh, national parks have, have been doing, but you know every every year 60 million visitors are made um, national, uh, go and visit some national parks to support New South Wales economy. I see there's a great opportunity for national parks for uh, extra income to actually make sure that these areas are actually transformed into an area where, where bike riders can ride safely, all ages can, can contribute, you know, tra trails for, for the little ones, trails for people that are not so good, and advanced tracks. Um, but I feel that any government um, not allowing people to do their recreation is a government that's going to fail. And the same with, um, you know, I'm a big supporter of people that choose to shoot. They should be able to go and shoot at ranges or wherever they choose to shoot. They should be supported by the, by the government and not um, stop their recreational uh, uh, pursuits. So I commend again the member for Coogee for bringing this forward and I commend the, the work that the, um, the, the uh, organisations have been to, to get this to, to where it is today and I do support the petition. Thank you. The question is that the House take note of the petition. Does the Minister seek the call? I then call the member for Coogee in reply. Thank you, Speaker. I firstly just want to start by thanking the members for Mulgoa, Barwon, Wollongong uh, and Heathcote for their contributions today. And I also just wanted to say, I do know that the member for Wallsend did want to speak to this petition here today. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here because she um, is incredibly passionate as well about trail bikes, um, in particular around registrations and around recreational registrations as well. Um, Bowen, I also love trail bikes and dirt bikes. It's my first taste of bikes that I ever had and it's what actually then uh, drove me to then get my Harley and continue to ride today. Um, I'm deeply disappointed, I have to say, that the Minister has not used this opportunity here, right now, to come and speak um, to the trail bike riders who have come here today, uh, who are watching online for this petition. He should have come down here. He's had an opportunity. This petition is here because he's refused to meet with them. And he's now had another opportunity to come down here and speak to them and he's refused to do it. So I'm deeply, deeply disappointed in the Minister for doing that. Um, there is a problem. There is an absolute problem that has arisen because the government is refusing to have a conversation with trail bike riders about a recreation that they love. This is resulting in unsafe uh, behaviour um, and illegal behaviour that is happening. Um, and we've heard this from the, um, from the member for Wollongong, and we hear stories about this all the time. And trail bike riders that I've spoken to, that I know, um, don't want to see that happen. They want to make sure that trail bike riding can happen in a safe place, but that will only be able to happen if a document, if, they're able, if the government doesn't, it needs to work with trail bike riders to find a solution and to find suitable land. The question is that the House take note of the petition. All of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The debate on the 20,000 signature electronic petition on trail and adventure motorcycling in New South Wales has, um, has now concluded. I thank the guests in the gallery who visited to listen to the debate and who worked on the petition.